Big news, Webflow introduces a native spline integration. And I have to say, it's very cool. We at FinSuite got our hands on a pre-release version to help create this video and show you what this is all about. We'll do an overview of what we found and walk through the spline integration capabilities. First, what is spline? It's a web-friendly 3D creation and animation tool. And we at FinSuite have been watching Spline's progress with great interest because it's super powerful. We used it on Wiz.com and Wiz marketing materials. It wasn't a great integration experience, to be honest. So we're really happy to learn that there is now a native Webflow integration coming. And this is absolutely going to change how we integrate Spline into our projects. Webflow presented this integration as a similar integration to the Lottie integration, but we have to say, we think this is way more capable, even in its initial state. We think this will change the way that animation is created inside Webflow. So let's jump in and see how it works. The spline element is located right here in the media section next to the Lottie animation element. And when we add the spline element to the canvas, it loads a placeholder scene. So let's do a little testing with our existing Wiz hero animation that we built in spline. The URL of the element accepts dot spline code files, which we can go and grab from the export panel. And now that we see the scene right here, let's go and check out the performance. It's actually pretty easy on performance. Um, and it's not going to fire the animations unless we go into preview mode. This is exactly what we want. This is going to make designer use a lot more capable uh, when we're using these heavier scenes. And we can actually modify this scene just like we would modify any other element in Webflow. So let's make it full screen here. This is going to cover the needs of people who prefer to animate everything right in Spline and only have the final output right inside Webflow. But really the most interesting part of this is to see this scene built and animated right inside Webflow Interactions. So let's give this element a scroll into view type interaction. And when we have our spline element selected, we can see a new type of action called spline in the list. And it can still affect elements and interaction triggers or classes just like regular Webflow elements. And note that all the animations and interactions of a spline scene are active in real time. Super powerful. The settings of this action contain every possible orientation option for specific spline objects, which we can select. And we can actually modify these distances with spline units. Again, super powerful. We will say the rotation units in this first version were a little weird. We weren't exactly sure what they meant, but hopefully at some point there will be a little bit of a change here. Um, we were hoping for the good old arc degrees for rotation but we still figured it out. It still works. It's still great. And let's go now and see our objects. We just have to open the object dropdown. And here we can see our complete, perfectly named spline structure. Okay, this is the scene. Great. Now an important note on spline structure. Just like with regular Webflow interactions, it's not really advised to target objects that were already moved or rotated or scaled inside spline. So you'll have to have those properties reset when applying any kind of transformations to these objects. And to avoid this, we can create special wrappers or groups inside spline that we can use as exclusive targets for Webflow interactions. So for example, if we want to, uh, let's say, rotate an object, which is already positioned inside the scene using rotation transformations, we can just wrap it inside a parent. And this parent will inherit the transformations and the inner child will now be free from transforms and we can safely target it. For testing, we will strip our hero scene from all animations that we added in Spline. And we're going to try to create all of these right here inside Webflow. One possible benefit of this setup is that we can initialize animations when a scene is in view and disable them 
when it is out of view. This can potentially save some CPU cycles. It can really give us full control of when this scene starts and stops, when specific things start and stop, just like we would with regular Webflow interactions. We went and removed all of our animations from the scene, and now the scene is static. We can divide all of our animations into groups, and the groups will be logo orbiting, build brick bobbing, apps brick bobbing, and rotating, and then icons rotating around the brain. And for convenience, we designated specific objects inside our spline scene with names that we could quickly see and apply animations to. And all of these will start with the prefix A-N-I dash for animation. Let's now start with our logo. This is an object that would be responsible for the logo orbiting. And let's see how that will work. As we mentioned already, um, we're not really sure how the rotation works in this. Uh, and to create the full 360 degree rotation, we needed to use the number 6.282. Not sure why, but it works. And now we need to return our object to its initial state. So if we intend to loop this animation, of course, we have to return it to the initial state. So we can set the animation to loop and preview. Okay, great. Everything works as intended. Now we need to create this first text brick bobbing, and we will add another scroll into view interaction right here to our scene. And we already returned the brick to its initial position, so it's ready to loop. Let's go check it out. Nice. Okay, next brick. We need to separate animations from them unless we want to use the exact same animation and have the exact amount of time. But really, we want to create a new animation because the rotation takes a different amount of time. So these won't be the same, they will be different. So as you can see, we have now these two different animations, one's for bobbing and one is for rotation. Oh, nice. Great progress. Now, the only thing we need to animate now is the icons wheel. This animation consists of two different rotations. The main elements circle rotates, while each separate icon counter rotates with the exact same speed to make elements stay upright during rotation. So let's start with the main circle of icons. We can actually reuse the same interaction to add the counter rotations because their duration for all icons are the same. Great. Now the counter rotations will be part of the animation movement as the main icon wheel rotates. Now let's do the same for the rest of the icons. And we're done. Let's see our animation play together. Okay, now we need to attach each created interaction to the scene. And there we go. We created the same animation. Now that we have everything working together, we just need to add out of view animations to stop playing our loops. All we need to do for each duplicated interaction is just delete everything but the last action, which returns objects to their initial state. Let's test the out of view states here. We can see the lower icon starts at the same place, and when we scroll back 
to the scene. Yep, everything works correctly. Nice. To wrap things up, we really wanted to confirm that you can use any sort of trigger to start and stop the animation for the 3D objects. So let's modify our interactions to target classes instead of our interaction trigger. This was required to target the interactions with other elements, but the scene itself. So let's test. The animation doesn't work because we removed it from the scene, but clicking this button, we can start and stop it. It works. And just like that, we created a 3D spline interactive animation with Webflow interaction controls. We hope to see additional functionalities added in the future as Spline introduces new features, control methods, and interactivity. The first version of this is already a significant addition to any visual developer's toolbox. We will be using it for production sites, and we think this is going to be a very valuable integration for the Webflow community. Enjoy your new animation power and enjoy this Spline integration.